Hafede, we're here at another ancient site, and this site is adjacent to the site that was covered in the last video, so feel free to check that out. I also gave a description of Lati in the last video, which is what you're looking at here. Now, the Lati are comprised of two components. It is a stone feature that has a supporting pillar known as a Haligi, and this Lati has its capstone toppled over here. It's on the ground, but the capstone is known as the Tasa. Now, even though this stone, this Lati feature is no longer completely erected, it is roughly in its original position. So there's a lot that we can still learn about this site. Now, unfortunately, the data set for this one is incomplete. Not all of the landscape is filled in, which just warrants maybe another visit to the site. But I say that because there are some features here that are difficult to make out that might be confusing. For example, this here is a tree trunk, but it looks very similar to the Haliki that we saw first. So we just have to make some careful distinctions as we're looking at this data set here. Now, as you approach the site, the first thing that you're going to encounter is this Haliki. Now, the Tasa is likely still around, but it's probably buried under the organic matter here. But let's try to get an accurate measurement. That looks pretty accurate to me. And this Haligi is in alignment with the first one that we saw here, which is typical of these Lati sites. Now, what we should do is we should try to take a measurement of this first Haligi here for comparative purposes. And so you'll see that there's likely a few centimeters at least of this Haligi that is buried uh, under the surface. Now let's try, it's not going to make much sense to take the height of this Tasa because it is on the ground. However, we can get the width. Okay, that seems accurate. Let's just take one more. Okay, that's more along the lines of what I was expecting. Now, one of the things that I love about sites like these is they're actually a bit out of the way. And so usually people that come through this site are doing so with intention. And we can see signs of that here. One of the most abundant artifacts in the landscape are pottery shards. And it's very likely that people that have vis visited this site very recently have left these pottery shards. Um, you'll see on the Haligi, there are two shapes. The one on the left is a darker red, and then the one on the right is a brighter red, almost orange. And that's indicative of the red clay slip that was used in the pottery. Um, and so it's just a sign that the people that are coming through here are attempting to make some sort of offering or acknowledging um, the respect that they should have as they enter the area or the reverence that they should have. And on this Tasa, uh, we see, sorry about that, we see at least one pottery shard that was left here as well. So that's always nice to see that there's an active caring uh, for sites like this. Now, before we end the discussion, and I'm going to encourage you to write any of your thoughts in the comments or ask any questions in the comments, because that always helps me to learn. But as we approach the site, we notice that growing in this uh, pocket here, in this empty space, was a coconut tree and the coconut tree was growing into the stones. It might have already broken the stones. This, these two stones might have been originally one piece, but I don't know that. Um, we were able to clear the coconut tree successfully, but as we enter these sites, uh, we want to limit the amount of touching we're doing. We want to limit the amount of moving of anything we're doing. Really, we shouldn't be moving anything, but the exception is if we see some kind of organic matter that's growing into the stones, that would be our cue to do something very carefully in a very systematic way because that's the way that these Lati stones are often broken is that tree roots grow through them or organic matter falls on them. So doing our part means just being intentional with the kind of plants that are growing around these ancient sites for the sake of preservation and so people can enjoy and view for generations to come.